Well, this week, San Francisco hosted two major climate science gatherings, one led by Governor Jerry Brown and another by the United Nations. Climate Watch senior editor Craig Miller reports on the UN conference. From heat waves and drought to heavy rainfall and flooding, this has been a record-setting year of billion-dollar disasters in the U.S. And according to the U.N.'s Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, we'll be seeing more of these extreme weather events in the future. The IPCC's working groups represent the collective knowledge of the world's top climate scientists. Co-chairing this group is Chris Field, who directs the Carnegie Institute of Global Ecology at Stanford. The last special report that was put out by your particular group uh, was on extreme weather. I believe it was the first time that the IPCC had ever made a direct link with extreme weather events, right? Having just done this report, what do we know today that we didn't know a couple of years ago? The IPCC special report on extreme events and disasters really had three main conclusions. Uh, the first conclusion is we know certain kinds of extremes are increasing, and that's in particular extremes of high temperature, heavy precipitation, uh, droughts, and events that are associated with high sea levels in some parts of the world. Uh, we also know that economic losses from extremes are increasing, uh, mainly as a result of the fact that we're building more and more stuff that's in the pathway of, uh, of, of these extreme events. And the third important conclusion is there are a lot of things that societies from individual towns all the way to countries can do to make themselves better prepared to deal with extreme events. You think that these events that we've been seeing, and there's been a dozen billion dollar weather catastrophes just in this country, averaging one a month this year alone, you, you're convinced that is the, no pun intended, the tip of the iceberg? Yeah. What we can say from a scientific basis is that we are seeing increases in certain kinds of extremes, heat waves, droughts, heavy precipitation, and um, extremes associated with high sea level. We can't yet, from a scientific perspective, do a good job of identifying a climate change component in a single extreme. Climate's variable, and there will be extremes whether or not there's climate change. We do know that extremes are increasing, and we have good predictions that we're confident in of extremes continuing to increase in the future. That makes it kind of tough for, for policymakers and planners to really know what to do about it, doesn't it? The way I think about it is that dealing with extreme events is a problem in risk management. Uh, we are good as a society in making decisions under uncertainty about whether to buy fire insurance and whether to fasten our seatbelt, whether to buy a house. Uh, dealing with climate extremes is much the same. We need to recognize that there's not 100% certainty, but that we need to act in order to protect ourselves appropriately. It seems like, at least in the terms of the year that we're talking about here, that California has sort of dodged the bullet, if you will. We've been spared most of these climate catastrophes that we've been seeing. But I assume we don't get a free pass here. And all of the things that you mentioned are things that we're vulnerable to here, right? Uh, California has uh, significant problems with high temperatures and heat waves. Uh, drought and water availability is, of course, critical for the future of California, especially California agriculture. Uh, California's got a huge and wonderful coast where sea level rise is an issue. And we also have um, potential for profound problems with flooding, especially in the Sacramento Delta. I've just seen a paper with your name attached to it that we're seeing the aspens start to die. When we look at evidence for climate change impacts on forest, where we're really seeing it in the most profound and I think most important way is in large-scale mortality events uh, across the western U.S., especially in Colorado, something like 15 percent of the aspen stands, the iconic tree of the west, have just died. Uh, what we concluded is it's a result of drought stress uh, with a drought that's the kind we expect with climate change. You know, it's the holidays. Uh, has this ever happened to you? A lot of, a, a lot of people are going to go home, uh, have dinner with family, and be told that this whole climate change thing is a hoax. What do they say to those relatives? We have now um, more than a century of science that is building a very clear picture about uh, what we know is changing, what we know isn't changing. Uh, the record of temperature increase is, is really uh, unequivocal at this point. The IPCC in 2007 concluded that it's very likely that most of the warming since the middle of the last century is a consequence of human actions. And when the IPCC says very likely, they mean more than 90 percent probability. So the, the window for opportunities for other things to be the dominant influences is really being closed by the increase in scientific knowledge.
So you say when you say that the science has given us a kind of a blurry picture of the future, as you did recently, it's sharp enough to know that what actions we need to take, you think? The climate is incredibly complicated. There are lots of details we don't understand, but the big picture we have a very solid understanding of, both in terms of observations about what's happened in the past, about the fundamental mechanisms that are driving the changes, and about the consequences of those mechanisms in the decades moving forward. Chris Field, thanks for your time. Thank you, Craig.